Hey guys, Lost Wolf here. In this video, I will show you guys a small tutorial about sector battles. What is a sector battle? A sector battle is an event that can start anywhere from 1 to 7 days and last 24 or 48 hours. But most of the time, it only lasts 24 hours. How to start a sector battle? That's a good question. So if you look at the systems, there's a bar to each system on the left and right side. The left indicates the players and the right indicates the Imperials. During a non-sector battle event, players can complete assault missions on any systems, and depend and the most and the players that completed the assault missions most on any system will start the sector battle when it reaches the gauge. Note that if the Imperial starts the sector battle first, the players will have to defend that system, which will decrease the rewards. But if the players start the sector battle, the rewards will be increased. So let's look at the sector battle that's already started on Anoint. You can see the Imperial Star Destroyer. So let's talk about the battle readiness. Every time you complete an assault mission when there is no sector battle, you will get something called a battle readiness points. And for every 150 battle readiness point that you obtain, you will get one battle plan. Battle plan is a currency that can be used for a number of things. So for example, if you go to your crews and you go to your crew runs, and if you go to battle runs on the top tab, during the first tab, you can send your crew members out to obtain victory points and battle plans. If you, They don't tell you the rewards, only when it comes back. But I already completed a couple of crew missions, so let's claim some of them. For example, for the first reward that I got, I got something called victory points. Victory points is something you would need to collect to progress through the sector battle and then you also obtain a battle plan which can be used to increase your ways to get victory points so let's claim a couple of them note that you can also fail when you have a 92 percent chance I really don't know how that works but it's it's pretty high okay so let's claim a little bit and if you go to opportunities on your battle run, the second tab on the left, you can use battle plans for a number of things. So for the first one, Chaos and Mayhem, you can use that to collect Hollow Disk. Hollow Disk is a currency used to obtain rare items and force and dark side missions. And you have to go to a different planet for that, but I explained that in a different video. So it takes two hours and it's it's pretty difficult to get if you don't have high crew members or someone that deals in espionage which is the crew weakness or you can spend them to get faction points faction points are used in the leaderboard to get a really high rank to obtain these tokens that you can use to get rank 3 abilities okay so let's look at the faction a little bit so depending on what's your primary faction, it depended what NPC will show up uh, during a location. For example, my primary faction right now is the IVIC Syndicate, and you cannot change the primary faction uh, during a sector battle. And once that happens, you'll see this hut guy. Well, I get a hut because mine's IVIC Syndicate. You'll get a different NPC that's standing there. And once you talk to him, he will sign a quest where you have to infiltrate the Imperial Star Destroyer, which is pretty cool. Okay, but uh, before we get through that, I want to show you guys the faction points and what it is usually used for. So if you go to your influence tab and you clicked on factions and you look at... Uh, where's the leaderboard? Okay, I clicked on it. So see, note that there are a ranking of all players that have the highest. And it reset every month. So if you have the highest for each faction, you will get a rank. And if you are ranked, you will get rewards. I haven't gotten any rewards from them because they're very competitive. So most of the time when a sector battle starts, most people focus on one faction. Or they focus on getting hollow discs. Or they focus on getting really high on the leaderboard of a sector battle for victory points. So victory points, what is victory points? Let's talk a little bit about the rewards. Note that uh, you see at the top, 
there is a big giant tab that says reward milestones number 15 there are 20 milestones rewards if you complete all of them you get reward for each milestone you hit so let's look at i did a couple so let's look at my rewards really quick they deliver to you in the mail so if you go to your mail and you uh check them here's an example of some of what other rewards are for you will get uh, these rare event crystals that you can only obtain during sector battles. Let's go redeem some of them. They're used to upgrade weapons, armor, and the stuff. And crew members. So let's obtain a couple of them. You, sometimes you get some tier 1 stuff, which is uh, somewhat useful, but not really for those that are already at max level at this point. And note, the higher level you are, the more victory points you obtain during the mission so it's very competitive and if you are lower if you're at a low level it you probably won't stand a chance but it's still good trying to attain them you also get crew members you get a lot of rewards so it's worth doing every sector battle and it's worth getting to a high rank which I will introduce in a little bit so these are a few example of rewards that you get during the sector battles most of them are useless for me right now because I'm already at a high rank and I got like all the good equip and gears and stuff that I will show you guys later on. Okay, so let's look at the reward tabs. Note that Victory Points is a collaborative effort on every player that plays uh, Star Wars Uprising. So everybody that participates in this event will help contribute to a greater goal. And that will earn you rewards for yourself and your cartel if you are in one. So for example, let's uh, read a description. Uprising battle. Though they have yet to locate the hidden dissident base, the Imperial forces now know that the former world city of Anoit holds secrets that are extremely valuable to others. Now that the forces of Empire seek to lock down the planet to keep anyone else from discovering anything of value. So you can see my current reward is Lieutenant. And it's, to get this reward, you have to be ranked from 3,000 to 10,000. So for example, let's look at the leaderboard. So this is the top players during the leaderboard. Different, different ranks give different rewards. Right now, from 3k to 10k, you get a rank called Lieutenant. And these are the two rewards that you get. But let's look at all the rewards first. As you can see, if you are placed around... 10,000 to 20,000, you will just get an event crystal. But note that this is only when we did not reach 2.5 billion victory points for everybody that type participates in this event. So let's look at the defeated uh, sector battle rank rewards right now. Lieutenant will only get two four star event crystals. Stock uh, you will also get a stock lip diplomat armor which gives you a random piece of three star diplomat armor and several recreation scripts while captain has five star event crystals and one random piece of four star equipment note that these uh armor up here are like only armor that are cosmetic that you can only obtain through sector battle events so every sector has a different piece of armor for Anoit, they have something called the Ubi Survival Armor. And if you reach Commander, which is from rank 6 to 100, you will get one random piece of Ubi Survival Armor. And you also get these other goodies down here too, like a five, a five of these four stars crystals and a random piece of four star diplomat armor. But note, if we win, the rewards will increase. So during a victory, you will get a lot higher reward. But most of the time, in these sector battles, in my experience, we have won every single victory battle and have not known a defeat yet. So you can be assured that players are dil diligently always farming for victory points and you will have at least victory or higher. So let's look at the higher overwhelming victory. It's pretty rare, but we do get them sometimes. So even if you're ranked lieutenant, you will get a random four-star crew, one random piece of four-star diplomat, one four star court crystal and ten recreation scripts. Most of the time I try to farm for captain because they're not as time consuming as commander in general. These people are the the crazy people that 
like farm like crazy. So I was so if you reach at least captain on overwhelming victory, you get two random pieces of Ubi survival armor. And note that you can also salvage these armor for really rare crystals and materials. And you also get one five star event crystals and you get a crew member, four star diplomat armor, and four star no more court crystals. So it's always good to always try to farm victory points. And how to farm victory points, you say? There are several ways. One of them I've already shown you through the crew members. Crew members, if you go to battle runs, the second tab, and all in the right, you can spend five battle plans to obtain more victory points and some faction points. I heard that the, if you invest in the two battle plans, you will be mainly farming for the faction points. So everybody has different goals during a sector battle. Or you can farm the rare hollow disc. Okay, so you can also participate yourself and instead of running crew missions to obtain victory points, you can also go on to the planet in the Anoint system and instead of clicking the planet itself, you click on the Imperial Star Destroyer and see how there's two quests. So the top one, you spend five battle plans to obtain a number of victory points. And you can also do the regular battle mission on the planet to obtain battle plans. So it's also dependent on your level. So the higher level you are, the more battle plans you will get. So let's do a random battle mission on Anoint right now. So the battle mission description reads, Battle missions grant victory points needed to win the current sector battle and have a chance to drop battle plans. Higher reward levels have a higher chance of dropping battle plans. I don't know why to say a chance because it's usually it's guaranteed. So this is a level 75 mission and you can also bring other people with you on battle missions if you want but it's preferably do it yourself because you'll go through it a lot quicker if you have the requirement uh, player rating. So there are, there are four different tiers of, of missions that you can do. Uh, for the my rewards, for the first one you, you don't get like anything at all but it's doable. You only get 300 victory points and two low tier materials. But as you increase the tier you get something called a battle plan and battle plans that you can use as a currency in this sector battle. So since I reached the required minimum rating for the tier 4, I will do that instead. You will get 3, so it's good to always have your high player rating. Alright, without further ado, let's, uh, let's get this started. The reward may be hard at your current player rating. Are you sure you want to continue? Confirm. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so running a mission is the same as doing a daily or an assault missions, but the rewards you will only get will be material or sector battle plans. And I haven't shown you guys my new cool armor yet, have I? I recently just finished getting it, so it looks a lot cleaner than broken up than most of the armor I've been wearing lately. So note that you will only fight Imperials during the sector battles in this event. And depending on how high your level is will depend on how difficult these guys are. So since I'm one of the higher tier players, these guys are a joke to me. I can take them out relatively easy. And I love my new ability, the Dura Cutter. It cuts through them like nothing. So I can just go through these without relative ease. So let's see what you got, Imperials. The only thing I fear from them is if they have any stun abilities, but luckily they don't and I can just like burn them. Pew pew pew. Laser. Okay. Oh yeah, and also depending on what planet you are on, uh, depends on the material rewards they give you. So since this is Anoint, it will give you the green material which is used to upgrade anything but if you upgrade a elemental poison armor protection it will give more exp to that armor 
I will explain it uh, if you haven't watched my other videos where I reached up to level like 50 in Victoria. Alright, so we're almost at the end. Use my ultimate, burn them, finish it really quick. I don't need to take this, but I'll take it just to make me feel more special. And that's it! See, that wasn't so hard. But it might be more challenge if you are a lower level trying to do a high tier. Oh yeah, look at my new armor. It looks so cool. I'm so proud of it. And yeah, these are uh, Material Forge Methane Compound. You see this little poison symbol next to it. So it upgrades any armor that has that poison symbol. And I get three battle plants. Alright, since we got some um, battle plants, let's spend a little bit of them on the crew. So you want a lot of crew members to to complete missions with so you can gain more battle plans if you want. So my goal right now is to obtain as much battle plan as I want and use them to gain victory points. So right now I'll send a uh, I'll send one guy, preferably someone that has uh, can get rid of the crew weakness. So let's send this guy with 92% chance and when he comes back, he will give me battle plans. And I will use that battle plan to go to the Imperial Star Destroyer and spend it on his battle opportunity up here. Oh, it says it expired, but uh, you can just go in and go out and it should have a new time limit on it. I don't know, I'm not sure why they do that, but it's, it's weird. So it is a 7 star mission. It reads, the Imperial Star Destroyer returned to anoint, perhaps to finish the job the Empire started. The Avax Syndicate needs to stand united with the rest of the people of the sector against these Imperials and let the Imperials know that they will not cow us into submission. Leading an assault against the Star Destroyer and the Syndicate will rally behind you. So basically the depending on what faction you put as your primary one, the description will change a little bit. But usually the rewards will be the same. Alright, so let's see, since we're spending 5 battle plans, so you look at the bottom, it says it costs 5, I own 14, and there's only from tier 2 to the tier, well, tier 2 to tier 4, so at the lowest tier, I will gain 13,000 battle uh, victory points, and 150 IVAC Syndicate reputation, reputation. but once, once I go down, I will, I will have almost 20,000 which is 19,025 victory points and 250 IVAX repetition. Repetition. All right, so uh, let's let's get this started. I'll show you guys what this mission's all about. All right, guys, welcome to the Star Destroyer. This is a pretty cool map where you're inside a Star Destroyer trying to kill Imperials. So it's pretty cool in a story related kind of ways. And I like this level a lot because you can see like, they put a lot of detail in this mission. You see like that TIE Fighter floating off. You can see that turret down there and see that, that other uh, transport ship there. So I really like uh, the way they designed this level. It's, it's really cool and I enjoy it a lot. But when the first released this game, I remember that it wasn't as detailed before. It only had one... Imperial Star Destroyer map and it was always the same, but they switch it up a bit every time you attempt this mission Which I like and they added like a lot of damage to it. You can see like a uh, explosion debris on the floor uh, scarred scarring on the floor from the explosions and uh, And everything in it. It's a really relatively short level, but since you're paying approximately five battle plans for it I think it's worth it especially you're getting that sweet 19,025 victory points that you can use to rank up. So what I usually do, I usually rank up the captain and just stay there, which costs a lot of hefty points. Usually the average victory points to stay in captain to be on the safe side is around 700,000. And as of now, I think I only have like 100,000. So I have some farming to do if I want to obtain those sweet, sweet rewards. And these Imperials don't hold a candle to you, see? We're already finished. 
And let's look around a bit so we can enjoy the scenic view that I want to show you guys. And there's also like amb ambience noises that you can hear, alarms and stuff. And it's pretty cool. I really enjoy the, the level design, the hard work they put into this. But if you see it around too much, you, you'll get used to it and stuff. Alright, so let's uh, finish the mission. So I strongly encourage you to keep doing these sector battles, especially on the Star Destroyer. You can look at a different variation of the Star Destroyer. It really enhances your experience with the Star Wars Uprising. And see rewards you get. You just get random tier 2 dash. Which is pretty good overall. Because you can use it to sell it to get more money and stuff. Okay. So I've played both of the missions already. And I got a new rewards milestone. It usually caps out around 20. So let's look at the leaderboard. And see how difficult it is for it to obtain. And all yeah. Let me talk to you about... Um, system control and influence that your cartel has so basically your cartel is uh, participating in this event so if your cartel and all of its member have a really high victory points you would play you would be, play, be placed on the leaderboard for if you're placed on the leaderboard depending on where you rank you will get an influence over the sector after the sector battle so for example um, my cartel has completed a sector battle before on Metal, and uh, when you first go into the planet Metal, it will tell you who was the number one there on the previous sector battle. So it was Order 66, and on the bottom right, you can see the influence that it has there. So say that your cartel has a high rank on the leaderboard, it will have an influence. So let's look at that really quick. So if you're number one, you will have the system control and every time a player goes into that sector, your cartel name will show up there. And if you're from rank 2 to rank 10, you will have dominant influence. And if you're from rank 11, and I believe it's all the way down to uh, 100, you will have major influence. And anything below that, from 101 to 250, you'll be ranked with a minor influence. So let's start from the bottom. So for minor influence, when you do any missions on that sector, you will have 10% bonus credits and 20% bonus ultimate energy. And it also says that buffs are awarded to all cartel members at the end of the sector battle and reset at the start of a new sector battle in that region. So since my cartel has reached the major influence, my cartel will have 20% bonus credits 10% bonus item quality, which is really good because it helps get you a higher, it gives you a higher chance of obtaining rare armors and weapons and dash and all that. And you also get 5% character experience point. And you have 40% bonus ultimate energy. And if you're fortunate to reach all the way up to the top uh, 10 to number 2, you have a dominant influence that gives you 50% bonus credits. 25% bonus item quality, 10% bonus character experience points, and 75% bonus energy. And if you are the number one of the sector battle and on the leaderboard of cartels, you will have your cartel's name will appear on a system map and you will have 50% bonus credits, 25% bonus item quality, 10% bonus character experience point, and 75% bonus ultimate energy. Wow, so you get a lot of stuff for being number one. It's like the rich get richer and the poorer get poorer. So if you guys really like this game, I suggest that you guys try to join one of these high cartels. Uh, I recommend joining to, you know, talk about Star Wars Uprising and all that. You don't want to just join number one just to be the best unless you just want to be the best. I don't know how their community is, but where I'm at, I'm really happy with my cartel. We talk a lot using the Lion app, and I'm really happy about that. So let's look at our sector battle, and I think that's about it. I think I covered everything, so if you guys have any questions or comment, leave it in the comment section below. I will look at the rewards one last time so you guys have an idea of what you guys can win. 
So for example, I only have... Uh, let's see how much is this. I have 11,000 victory points right now. And my, cart and my cartel altogether, we have 5.8 million, 5 .8 million. So we're going to try our hardest to try to rank high in the leaderboard. And uh, oh yeah, let me talk about the my current rewards tab. It says Lieutenant. I talked about that. The next milestone is the next item you will get for reaching that milestone. And this Freedom tab right here, it doesn't really tell you much. It just says if it's a zero, it says that you are currently on a defeat if if it doesn't move in 18 hours because it ends in 18 hours and 24 minutes. It tells you the timer right there. If it's a one, it means victory. If it's a two. It means strong victory, and if it's a 3, it means overwhelming victory. And it tells you your uh, current influence that you have right now. So, mine's a major influence. Alright. Also, if you have not progressed in the story missions far enough in during a sector battle, you guys can still participate in the sector battle. This is my alt character, Victoria Kuang, and the sector battle is going on right now. Note that I only unlock Burning Khan and Matau, but if you scroll up here, you can see anoint. There you go. The Imperial Star Destroyer is right there and on anoint the planet. If I click on that, there is no missions that I can do. So the only thing I can participate in is the sector battle on this sector. So if you press on the Star Destroyer, this is the battle mission, but the only thing you can do is collect battle plans. So you can only do missions here to obtain a few victory points and battle plans. And like I said, the battle plans is used to spend on crew runs if you want to collect hollow disc or faction points, but it is very important that you have a hefty crew because without any crew members, you may not be able to run a lot and always try to have 20 out of 20 active battle runs at a time since the duration is only an hour it's imperative that you guys check very often most likely every hour so you guys can send your crews to grab more battle plans or whatever your objective is so that is very important and one more thing about the sector battle is that there's something called imperial opportunity which is a quest giver that gives you the imperial quest that appears right after you finish any sector battle mission or crew member mission. And they appear in any of the location at the starting point. For my location right now, they'll appear around of where I'm standing. So once they appear, you talk to them and they'll uh, give you a quest you can choose to accept or not. But I strongly recommend that you choose to accept because they are very rare. Most people go through every single sector battle and probably have not seen a single one so if you see one jump on it they are very distinct they're an NPC that stands right there with a red Imperial logo floating over their head once you accept their missions you go to the Star Destroyer and you accept doing their mission which will give you Imperial gear they are very rare so I'll show you uh, some example of the Imperial gears that I have gotten over the period of time during the Imperial opportunity and you also get some from the story mission as well. Alright, so let's take a look. So I'll equip all the pieces of the Imperial gear that I have obtained over the duration of my time in Star Wars Uprising. They are Tier 1 and Tier 2. Tier 2, I heard that it's possible to get, but it is very rare. And I have not seen a single person have them. So basically... You get, I have so many gear, it's hard to find my gear sometimes. Uh, there's one right there. And the last one should be uh, right here. So note that I have every single Imperial gear except the gloves. That's the only one I'm missing. And as you can see, mine is like all over the place. I have five stars, pants, five star backpack, a six star helmet, and a seven star chest. And let me go to my armory to show what they look like. Any gear that you obtain over the duration of this game, you can always look at them in your armory. So you can, I, it is tier 1. So tier 1, I'm going all the way to N. And as you can see, uh, you get the starting one is a 5-star trooper cadet. 
So you look like a cadet that you've been fighting throughout your Star Wars time. And once you upgrade that to 6 star, it becomes a Stormtrooper. Which I only have 2 pieces of gear that are upgraded to Stormtrooper. And lastly, you have a Specialized Trooper. I only have the chest as of now. And they are very rare to get. So if you finish the Imperial Opportunity, you will have a chance to get Imperial Gear or a Crystal. Most of the time, you'll probably get crystals because gears are very rare to have. So, and I think that's pretty much it for the sector battle. I hope that you guys learned a lot from this and good luck on your hunt for these Imperial gear. Oh, and let me show you the crystal that is required to upgrade those gears. So we go to components. And since we have tier 2, Polish Havid. These are the gears that you are going to use to upgrade the Imperial gear so basically this is tier two these crystals are used to improve imperial equipment higher quality crystals are needed for more advanced gear so since i do not have any imperial tier two armor these are kind of useless to me now the ones that are used to upgrade the cadet stormtrooper and the regular stormtrooper as well as all the other stormtroopers are these tier one gear right here which are the same descriptions. These crystals are used to improve Imperial equipment. Higher quality crystals are needed for more advanced gears. So yeah, they're, they're pretty rare. So if you have them, don't sell them. Just stock up on them just in case you have those gears. And you can see that Imperial symbol right there. And let me show you the requirements on the Imperial gear that uses these crystals. So if you look at, say, the pants, you go to upgrade. It requires three of the polished Havid, and then you're gonna need a uh, lanthanide crystals as well to upgrade the gear and here is the polished electrum that you get from the sector battle you're gonna need these if you're gonna upgrade these to the next star of stormtrooper gear so yeah all right thanks for watching guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope it's very helpful especially to the new players out there a good refresher for everybody else and i will see you guys in the next epic lost wolf productions or star wars missions until then stay frosty guys